Um, part of the procurement of the new plant, there's obviously there's a few other criteria we needed to meet. Um, we were determined, or we, or we knew in Nelson, we didn't have a large resource of um, either engineers or site staff to actually carry out the build. So one of the criteria to start with was we didn't want to build a plant. So we wanted to buy something off the shelf that arrived in containers. So whether that was a, a semi-static or a, a modular type system, so that was our, our initial concept when we went to market was we wanted a modular off the shelf plant. Um, the other one was our time frame. So we obviously can't really shut the quarry for six months to build this thing. Um, there's the, at the moment, Nelson is currently in the process of doing the Waimea Dam, um, and we knew we were going to have high demand, but there was no way we could shut our plant down. So we had produced the year prior enough sealing chip to cover off the season, and we, we knew with the chip plant we, could, we had a short window of two to three months where we could shut the plant down and install a new one. Um, one of the challenges was we haven't existed, the site is really long, and narrow, so we don't actually have a lot of scale. So first priority was it was modular, we didn't want to build it. Second one was we don't have a lot of space, so it needs to be really compact. Uh, some of the, the other criteria we had was we haven't in the past been able to produce crusher dust separately. So our old plant was a complete closed circuit and the crusher dust went straight into the concrete eggs and over the screen, so it was included in the sand. We never knew how much that was. Um, another reason we wanted a dry circuit for the dust is then we can then, a future proofing, we supply our asphalt plant with dust from another site. That plant's due for decommissioning. Um, so we, going forward, we want to be able to supply our, our asphalt plant um, crush dust as well. Um, so that was, a, that was actually one of the biggest issues we had. A lot of suppliers could supply a plant, but they couldn't actually separate out um, the dust. So we want to be able to, we, we want to, be able to run crush dust only, or actually crush the dust and chip circuit, so we want that flexibility. Uh, one of the main products which we sell a, a reasonable amount of and going forward more and more uh, with the way ceiling design's going is grade two. Um, to date we actually haven't been able to produce grade two on site, we normally have to hire in a plant to do that, or we shut down our concrete plant to actually make grade two, which in this in this current market there is no capacity to do that. So. If I wrapped up the, all of the requirements for this new plant, uh, it has to make grade two and all other grades of sealing chip. Uh, it has to have a separate circuit of crusher dust and uh, it has to fit within the area and be sort of modular, not off the shelf. Um, a big part of the actual procurement process was, which we learnt from a previous project, in this day and age with COVID going on, one of the, one of the big factors was going with New Zealand companies. So we had companies from overseas interested in pricing. Um, they did obviously go through the process, but one of the factors we had to take into account was if, if we need some local support, there's, there's only a few companies which have got proven history of it. Um, and Bert was able to assure us and provide detail on the support that Equip2 can offer. Uh, when it came down to the final selection phase, we obviously had to, we went back to our, our base Sort of scope of works as such, so the plant would fit on site. So the Equip 2 plant, obviously, we had proof, we could see, we modelled it, we could see that it would. The other key factors was it could produce grade two, so we had that box ticked. We were still concerned about the dust circuit, so it was sure, clearly showed a dust circuit, but we didn't really have, we couldn't quite, we understood roughly on how that would happen. We couldn't actually really see it, even though it was, it was in the modelling. It was, and Bert from Equip2 basically gave us the confidence. He's like, no, this is definitely going to work. Uh, so basically, that sort of took our three main boxes, and obviously all the other. There was a new plant; its production was going to be up to what we required. Um, they were pretty easy, easy, easy wins. The, the way we were going to run the plant was I, I was looking after the initial stages, uh, high-level stages, however you want to put it. Uh, and then basically Troy Adamson was going to take over on site as far as running the installation and the removal of the plant. So I guess give you a bit of a background on, on the old plant. Um, basically we made no dry crusher dust, so that's a zero there. Um, and as far as sealing chip went, we made only four grades, not the five. And of those grades, sort of daily tonnages were between sort of 25 and 50 tonne a day for, on the old plant. Uh, the new plant, um, obviously 
we've got dust, which we're sort of achieving up around 250, 300 tonne a day of um, dry dust. And the sealing chips are sort of ranging from 100 tonne down to 60 tonne a day, so more than double the, the old plant's capacity. So. Yeah, so I guess James involved me through the whole process, so um, obviously we both had ideas on I guess the biggest needs were, and um, as James explained, for me it was being able to make all grades of sealing chip and especially the, the dry crusher dust because there's just more opportunities with that than, than our old method. So, yeah. I guess uh, the key thing was obviously time frames. Um, we had to obviously remove our old plant to enable the new plant to come in and for us, um, the Quick 2 obviously applied us a great solution and a very quick build time once the gear arrived on site. So. That gave us, I guess, confidence that once we pull the pin on the old stuff, um, we know within a certain time frame we can have the new one up and running. So, yeah. So once basically the old plant was removed, that's that's when we probably looked at um, the layout of the new foundations, and one part of that was trying to get obviously services out to those foundations. Uh, initially, we had planned to go underground and, and trench across to each one, and after removing the old plant, we dug down and found existing foundations and pipes and just a number of things that would just been quite a challenge to, to remove in a timely manner. Um, so we, we opted to, to stick it all above ground, um, got the foundations all in and then use the um, cable ladder to take the cables and, and the pipes so all the services are kept together and then future proof and everyone knows where they are. So again I guess um, a quick two could provide us with basically an overlay layout which gave dimensions and basically we could orientate it whichever way we liked, which we did play with a few times, um, mainly trying to utilise our existing um, bar mat crusher. And we, we knew we were going to move that slightly and it's, it's probably only sitting about 10, minute, uh, 10 metres from, from where it was. Um, and then, yeah, we could just play with the pads and then um, Equip2 provided us even with the loadings on each screen or each individual bit of kit. And that went to our obviously engineer for basically designing the pads, right thickness and, yeah, we then gave our civil team a working drawing um, and just had a surveyor come in actively as we needed and he'd just peg stuff, each, basically each pad as we went um, because it was still in the stage of even cleaning the area so we basically did the bar mat pad first because that sort of centred everything and then just worked from there and then just got the surveyor back, here's the plan and he just would just mark it, each pad for us and then yeah, the fill-in stuff was done sort of just as and when we could. Foundations were done, sort of aligned with um, when the, the shipping was about to arrive um, and right through that process Quip2 kept us informed because there was a few delays at the time with COVID and bits and pieces and one of the key things was every container we knew what was in it, the loading weights of each bit of plant so that helped when it come time on site to decant, we knew what was in there, the crane knew how heavy it was and basically gave us sort of a chance on site to actually place it somewhere where it's not going to be in the way but close to where it's going to be actually installed so having that detail on the plans and containers just, just made that a lot easier. So we had sort of made areas available for them and said this sort of needs to go here and this needs to go there. Again just trying to work in with their operation that was still running, we still had trucks coming past um, pretty close to the area but we, we did cordon it off so it was a safe working zone for those guys and there was no access by our machines or anything into that area. So, so that, again that was probably the biggest key is we, we just can't stop that plant with the demand at the moment. So yeah, it was they worked in well and the crane could keep out of the way. Once, once we had that area for them, it was basically their site and we, we didn't have to interact with it with our daily operations. So. Probably even working with um, TJ and his team on site, there was a number of checks um, that we did in alignments just to make sure I was happy with where um, head drums things were feeding onto screens and I mean things always look good on paper but just having those physical checks and making sure things were right was a sort of key success really. So on the health and safety front, um, yeah we were incident free, um, no one got hurt during the, the build process which is fantastic. Uh, we had a number of audits carried out on us from um, our national quarries sort of health and safety manager both and our um, just local health and safety reps that come around and audit us regularly. Um, all documentation was checked and in place from, from all parties, contractors and us. Put two, or Bert basically said it was sort of a three week build on site and I mean we were probably a little bit optimistic of that thing and man that's going to be quick and to be honest that it was done. So right right from the start we, we needed to get that dry circuit up and running first because a um, key part of that product which is basically manufactured sand is it gets blended with our um, natural concrete sand and that basically improves our yield by introducing that. 
Um, so that was a key to try and boost our sand yield was to get that plant operational first, which was the easiest one, no, no water involved. And um, yeah, so that was probably running probably a month prior to the, the wet side of the plant. So having the ability to run that dry circuit was obviously a key component in, in what we went for because um, we knew it was going to have to be staged. So I guess one of the other key things when we we're just making dust only is it enabled us to utilise, I guess, what's deemed byproducts in most quarries. So you take pea metal, um, products like that, that sort of everyone ends up with a surplus. We can um, put a percentage of that back in and um, starting to recycle as much as we can, um, turning it into a dust which is a usable product instead of just sitting in a massive stockpile down the back of the yard waiting for something to happen with it. So we're, we're currently sitting on around about 20,000 cubic metres of, of pea metal um, and it is going to take some time to work through that but basically running dust only we're sort of putting 50% um, pea metal back into the mix um, so in time we will see our pile slowly reduce and, and that's a long term game so um, yeah we hopefully turn a low value product into a high value product. I guess one of the other key benefits of the plant was because um, it's programmable e easily we can basically give feedback on uh, each belt starting in this sequence we want it slightly different and um, basically put to or the cost can go in the background and um, basically program to what we want um, which, w which we have done and yeah it just makes our life easier and, and then even on power consumption stuff you've got you're starting your biggest motor first so when you've got most juice in the system it, it's there and then works its way from there so potential front um, the old plant consumed X amount of power and pretty much the, the new plant consumes very similar. Um, the bar mac itself, um, there's no extra wear or anything to um, to run it as we do now, but we get two extra products at, at the end of it. So we get the grade two and, and dry crusher dust. So two more products and no more power consumption. So now we've got obviously got the plant up and running for fully commissioned. Uh, from, a, from, from my point of view, it's, it's gone really well the equip two side of things on time on budget the only real time issue we had was a little bit of shipping due to COVID um, but that was well communicated and, and because going right back to the start we were talking about modelling we actually had a, 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 a 3D model of what was in each container so when we knew there was a container delayed or there was a container was arriving you know earlier than we thought uh, we were just told what container it was, we knew what, what was in there so we knew what gear to have here on site so we only needed to get the gear, the cranes and bits and pieces here for the, for the critical components that needed lifting. So it just made everything really seamless. Hence once we actually got going on site, our, our, the, I think it was about 12 days from, from when Equip2 arrived to when it was basically they walked away and we just had to start hooking things up.